Deepak Chopra, your previous book was called Super Brain, and now you're back with Super Genes. So I guess I'm turning to a real Superman, right? Why not um, Super Immunity before that? And then, yes, into Superman and Superwoman. Well, in your book, you say that gene activity is absolutely under our control. Can you expand on that? Talk about super genes. Okay, so you have 23,000 genes that are human. You have about 3.3 million genes that are microbial. It's called the microbiome. Then you have a protein-like structure above your genes that's called the epigenome. And these three interact and respond to your thoughts, to your emotions, to your diet, to exercise, to sleep, to personal relationships, social interactions, even if, all, even also to Wall Street going up and down. In other words, every experience modulates the activity of your genes because they are activities, they're verbs, they're not nouns. And in the book you say there's no good or bad genes. But what about cancerous genes or uh, alcoholic genes, obesity genes? It seems like those are pretty bad genes. There are 5% of disease-related gene mutations that are fully penetrant, which means they mean bad things. 5% of disease-related gene mutations. A mutation is an error, it's a variation from the normal genes that we inherit. And that can be due to environment or it can be a random mutation and those 5% of disease-related genes we cannot stop uh, unless there's a new drug or something that blocks the penetration of those genes. But the remaining 95%, even the mutations, think of mutations like a typo in a manuscript, okay, a spelling mistake. So some are really bad, you can't make out the sentence, and some actually are not so bad, so you can influence them by lifestyle. All right, can you tell me how I can influence those genes? How can I make my DNA better? Is it resting? Is it eating better? You don't make the DNA better. DNA is just the alphabet, deoxyribonucleic acid. You can activate the genes, which are stretches of DNA that code for a protein or a unit of hereditary. And so the most important things are sleep, natural sleep, seven to eight hours, uh, your emotions, uh, if you experience love, compassion, joy, peace of mind, and not stress. Uh, the third thing would be exercise, and now we're doing work with yoga and breathing that also changes gene activity. Uh, meditation, uh, and food that's not contaminated by poison. In other words, manufactured, refined, processed, uh, GMO, pesticized, food, which is basically steroids, hormones, and chemicals. Your body is not meant for that. So if your food is natural, comes from the earth, you're all set. How does evolution fit into your theory? Because uh, will my genes be different if I move to Florida or if I move to Minnesota, a colder climate? Can you fit your theory within the theory of evolution? Yes, I think Darwin described evolution without knowing anything about DNA or genetics. Uh, it was a long time ago, and he was pretty good in his description of the mechanisms of evolution and evolution of species. But we are in a different time now. We know the effects of culture. So right now, it is culture which is shaping gene activity. Everything from music to art to architecture to poetry to understanding of science is shaping the very activity of our genes. And your experiences can influence genetic activity three generations or four generations down the line. So how you experience life at the moment will determine the evolution of the future of our species. And then finally, since we are here on Wall Street, is there any way to make money out of this concept of super genes? We have a lot of biotech companies out there right now uh, tinkering, toying with, uh, with genomics and genetics. So uh, how would someone take advantage of this thought? See, the genomics promise didn't fully pan out. The reason is, I just told you, only 5% of disease-related gene mutations are fully penetrant or predictable. 
So where's the future? Right now, some internationally, people are doing something called the epigenome roadmap, which is actually showing which genes turn on and off, or which genes the volume of activity goes up and down, just like Wall Street, that are corresponding to changes in lifestyle. The epigenome roadmap will give uh, investors a lot of opportunities with gadgets, with technology, with uh, things that integrate exercise, sleep, heart rate, heart rate variability, breathing, brain waves, moods, all this. And this will ultimately, by the way, I mean, my work shows this will predict, include things like traffic accidents, hospital admissions, uh, crime rate, social unrest, whether Wall Street is going up or down. So there's a huge future. All right. Thanks a lot, Deepak. Thank you, Greg. And thank you for watching The Street.